by my original statement, though, that there's a brand of more radical feminism that, that insists that our culture is best characterized as an oppressive patriarchy, and I think that, first of all, that that's an appalling sociological doctrine, and I think it has very negative psychological effects. Mm -hmm. And they won't be limited to men, because in, if it's true that there's something toxic, let's say, about masculinity per se, what that will ine inevitably mean is that as women adopt more masculine roles, traditionally... Hi, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you are new here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So today, I'm reacting to Jordan Peterson, I am not anti-feminist. So guys, please, let's watch this video together. Poof! The first thing I would say is that um, I'm not anti-feminist, per se. I mean, I think the idea that the world would benefit from the movement of talent from both sexes into the workplace as rapidly as possible is something that anyone with any sense should share, given the rather... Uh, the rarity of talent and the necessity for for utilizing it. Mm. Um, I do stand by my original statement, though, that there's a brand of more radical feminism that that insists that our culture is best characterized as an oppressive patriarchy, and I think that, first of all, that that's an appalling sociological doctrine, and I think it has very negative psychological effects. And they won't be limited to men, because in, if it's true that there's something toxic, let's say, about masculinity per se, what that will inev inevitably mean is that as women adopt more masculine roles, traditionally, what, what is that toxicity somehow going to go away? But that's a so straw man because no one says there's anything toxic about masculinity per se. What do you mean no one says that? The, the term <laughs> exists. No. Well, no, they How is that a straw a man? Well, well, but where did the term a, it's come a from? It's phrase that's used about forms of masculinity that are harmful to men and women. It's not about masculinity per se. You must know that. I read the American Psychological this. Association guidelines for the treatment of boys and men, and I know perfectly well that this is no strong ma straw man. And it's not only devoted towards what you might describe as the more aggressive ends of masculine behavior. It's aimed at, at masculinity in a much broader, in a much broader range of... There's a much broader range of accusations that are underlying, that are under the surface than that. And so I don't see in what way at all that it's a straw. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to pause that argument for a second and yeah, go to uh, Catherine McGregor. And Catherine, I mean, you've you've lived on both sides of the gender <laughs> fence. <laughs> so um, what are your thoughts on on these issues? And the, just go back to the question that I was raised. I don't know whether that qualifies me or disqualifies me. Frankly, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, I ratted on the team, but not because, <laughs> not, not for any sociological reason. It was intensely personal. I gather we might address that, but. Look, I, I, I'm not entirely out of sympathy with uh, Jordan's critique. I, I, I'm the oldest person on this panel by you, Tony, and in my lifetime, I've, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen, uh, you know, rolling institutional crises through the West. You know, the great American settlement based on Bretton Woods and NATO and the, and the United Nations and so on is fraying globally in the area that I can talk about with some authority. We're seeing a dissolving global order now with the rise of two autocratic totalitarian capitalist states, uh, which is replicating the conditions of the 1930. And I gather we're not doing the geostrategic stuff, but I think it's very alarming. When Robert F. Kennedy, who was my political hero, was running for the presidency of the United States in 1968, he addressed disenfranchised African Americans who were wearing the backlash from... from many white men who were losing their jobs or perceiving that they were losing their jobs. The deindustrialization of the West as, as jobs are exported to the developing world, uh, all of these factors are... Uh, Bobby Kennedy said it. It wasn't Jermaine Greer that said it. He said, when you remove from a man the right to stand before his family as a breadwinner, and people will say that's patriarchal. That's your, that's your minute, by the way, so... All right, well, I'll shut up. But <laughs> the, the, the removal of meaningful work amongst especially unskilled men has a political consequence mm. and it's been washing through the American system since 1980 with the mm. Reagan Democrats, mm. the fraying of the New Deal coalition. I don't entirely agree with Jordan's analysis but the, the problem can't be gainsaid and three million books later in 50 languages or whatever it is, 
I bought, I bought your book, by the way, and uh, you're outselling Shane Warne. Now, that's a culturally <laughs> specific <laughs> reference. <laughs> that delights me in two ways, yeah. because in Australian cricket, no one has more bleached blonde hair or has had more work done than I, but Warne is a close second. Uh, we should put that out on Twitter account. Wow, 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 wow. This is, this is good. Like, like I was just listening to the um, um, lady there. I was just listening to her, the way she was, she was, she's a um, guy before, now she's a female. So, like, I was just listening to her when she was talking that there's nobody that I've gone to procedure more than how she have gone through like she just went to like to me she went for what she wants yeah she wants to be a female even when she is a guy before she wants to be a female she wants to look every bit about female the nose talk the hair the body everything so i feel that um people go nowadays people go to like go into in what they want if you want to be a female you pursue the dream if you want to be a male you pursue it so i feel that this anti-feminist i feel that when you are um, a feminist you should know how to um speak how to speak how to talk how not to talk and disrespect others because i'm a family i'm a feminist i'm a feminist no if you are a feminist, you should know how to talk. Because if someone disrespects you being a feminist, I'm sure you won't take it lightly with the person. So, you just know how to be um, be a good feminist so that you won't be rude to someone else. You understand? Because if um, I can do whatever man can do, I can do whatever man can do. Yes, but you should know how to be able to talk to your party. You know, when you are married to a man, then you start um, abusing him because you feel that you are a feminist. You can do whatever you want. Whatever you want. You can talk to him anyhow. No, no, no. That's not good. I just feel that um, is. Um, I believe in communication. If you can communicate with your partner and you can be able to talk more, you can work out things with your partner and you live great. Yeah. So this video is just talking about anti feminists. Yeah. So guys, please comment below. Any video you want us to react to, comment below. And also if you have share your point on this video on the comment section. Like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and get fashion store. Fashion makes sense.